Chapter 1. Pretending you're okay when you are not will only break you more. Sometimes, humans feel like things get difficult super fast, and they want to have a moment where they can tell themselves directly that there is nothing to worry about. Some people spend the majority of their childhood either emotionally abused or neglected by their parents. They had no capable adults to show them how to grow up, much less take care of them. Some were privileged but had little or no parental guidance, and by the time they turned 25, the only reliable habits they had learned were figuring out new ways to spend their days. This, in turn, makes them scared, anxious, and always on the brink of emotional implosion. It might seem easier to keep up appearances, but it is crucial that you find a way forward. Most people want a life they can enjoy or be proud of or at least deal with, but they don't understand how to build that life. Many people are dealing with a lot of difficult situations, even those who grew up in great environments. If you yearn to achieve the outward markers of a happy, lucky life, read on. You will learn to stop walking around with overwhelming emotional pain and anxiety. It is time to forget that guilt and shame you feel and live happily. Chapter 2 Take the first step to resolving your issues by working out your past. Start where you are without brooding too much about how far you have to go and what might go wrong. You have the tools to effectively dig past wounds in a way that isn't soul-crushing, draining, and regretful. First, you need to acknowledge the thought or feeling you're having no matter how petty, dark, or seemingly unimportant. Permit the feeling or thought to come to life, even if it seems irrelevant. After coming to terms with your thoughts, try to touch all of the feelings related to that thought. This is the time to pour out your heart's content and give in to how you feel. Don't hold back or deny your feelings. Allow your emotions to come to life because resistance adds gas to our flaming emotions. Then, get curious about why the issue is coming up for you now. Keep questioning yourself. Sometimes it might take a while to derive answers, but you are getting into the practice of becoming self-aware and conscious. You have to know what it takes to heal the wound. By working out your past experiences, you can find physical peace and relief. The final step is to follow through with the healing action. It doesn't have to be huge, but it should be real. A part of the healing action is the conscious use of affirmations. You can end your emotional mining with this affirmation. I am lucky to deal with this issue now instead of letting it break me down. Figure out the silver lining and then fill in why it's a great thing. Show yourself why it's a good thing. A miracle that you're dealing with this right now. This will make you feel a whole lot better about the situation. Chapter 3 Journaling helps to open the mind and exposes it to a world of possibilities. A journal is not a place to record the daily events of your life. Neither is it a place to describe the happenings of the previous night. It's a place where you can get in touch with the core, internally and externally, of what you believe. Some of us have limiting beliefs, and we are unaware that we have set a low bar for ourselves. Journaling is the gift that gives us a chance to unleash what is right. A belief and the truth are two very different things, and sometimes you might believe you cannot have your biggest dreams become a reality. The truth is that you can heal your past traumas. You can build the life you want for yourself, but you're going to have to do the work. The work here begins by exploring and writing down what bothers you, what you dream about, and what you will now make real. Out of your head and onto the page, you have a chance to fight your worries, to give voice to your dreams, to see if there are limits holding you back. You might have been born and be currently living in a set of less than ideal circumstances, but only you can decide if those things define you. You have the ability to write your own story, to kill your worries, to untie your dreams. You can be that person who floats above the petty little annoyances of life and looks back down on earth with a peaceful and clear perspective. You can't control the outside world's happenings, but you can control the story you are telling yourself in your journal. Chapter 4. It's important that you always update your journal so you don't miss out on important events. A journal is not the easiest thing. Sometimes you don't feel up to it, but you can't stop now because you want to keep telling your story. Here are some tips to help you remain consistent in your journaling. If you avoid writing because you don't have your own private space, get out of the house. Take a walk until you find a quiet place you feel comfortable with. If you're avoiding journaling because you're sleeping over at a new person's place, that is not good. Instead, you should tell them you have your things to attend to and get to your notebook. Alternatively, you can bring it with you and tell the person the truth. If you are avoiding journaling because you don't have time, you can find the time. Set your alarm to wake up 10 minutes earlier and try to do that for the rest of the week. Then the following week, set it for 20 minutes earlier. If you are avoiding journaling because it feels self-centered, you need to understand that it is not. Many other people keep journals and have been able to find peace through that. If you avoid journaling because you think you will fail and it seems complicated and you would rather instead not start something you might ruin, don't overthink. Overthinking will only discourage you from doing what you planned. It helps to know that it is okay to fail, but it helps even more to try. Chapter 5. Writing prompts will help you keep up with journaling when you're tired. Sometimes journaling seems discouraging. Where does one even begin? This is where prompts come in. Prompts will give you the necessary motivation and help you begin precisely where you are. Here are some prompts to help you with your writing. Today, here is what I feel in my heart. Keep writing until you've poured out all the things you are currently feeling. Today, I am grateful for this very small thing that happened yesterday. Let it be something simple but nice. Today, here are 10 things I love about myself. If this
this is extremely difficult to do, take a break, drink water, breathe in and out, and continue. It is essential you complete the list. Dearest journal, I have a question I have been thinking over and over in my brain, and I thought you might have an answer. Write down the question today, and then be prepared to be amazed when you can answer it tomorrow more easily. Your journal, your internal core, might have the answers that you don't. If nothing else mattered, not money, not kids, not other people's expectations, not jobs, nothing, my dream day would look like. Bring into view every aspect of that day, because that is the day we are working toward. Try to discover the little elements that you can achieve now. Today, I set an intention to act with. Write out how you will carry yourself today. Do you want to work on concentrating on one task at a time? Do you feel like you've been a little mean to people around you lately and so you want to act with more affection? Check in with yourself throughout the day and see how it worked out. There is something I've always wanted to deal with but I haven't for some reason. Here goes. It's fantastic, but most of the time, we know that we most need to fight. We just need to be committed to it. Write about what you have and the things around you. Writing about the happening around you will help you reframe your perspective to notice what you have. Did you know? Mark Twain, Frida Kahlo, Charlotte Bronte, and Leonardo da Vinci kept journals. Ida B. Wells fought for civil rights in America and still found time to keep a diary. Chapter 6. Treating yourself like royalty will strengthen you daily. You are stronger when you give yourself extraordinary kindness. There is no better time to enhance yourself than in the morning because the day is yours. You might have to finally break up with someone you are dating or be broken up with. You might also have to think of a way to strategize around a boss who is belittling you. You might even get the worst news of your life this day, but while you are alone in your space, you can respect and honor yourself while you have a moment of quiet. It is a healthy way to start your day, and when you begin your morning acknowledging that you are a goddess, you'll notice that the whole world will begin to treat you that way. First thing in the morning, acknowledge that you are powerful and worth taking care of. You do not need to be held to some unachievable standard as that will only make you stressed out. You are flawless, the whole of you, your entire being, just as you are. Look at yourself in the mirror, hug yourself, hold those bits of you you don't like together, chant those words like an ancient prayer, and now show the world your exquisite majesty. You can treat yourself like royalty in the morning by making yourself a nice brew. Yeah, coffee is excellent. You can add a substantial amount of portion of milk, sugar, cinnamon, dried ginger, or herbs, whatever works for you. What I have learned is that you are stronger when you give yourself incredible kindness. Tara Schuster Another way to care for yourself is by taking care of your face. Every gender can take a moment to look at themselves in the mirror and make sure they are satisfied with their look. It might just be a spritz of toner for you, or maybe you use nothing at all. Regardless, take a moment and face yourself in the mirror and make sure this is the face you want to bring into the day to show both your foes and admirers. Chapter 7 Choose only the people who lift you, who are reaching for higher things themselves. You don't need people who mirror destructive behaviors you find exhausting or not in line with how you want to lead your life. What you need is a small circle of friends who bring their originality and real selves to the table, people you trust and admire. Your bonds are what gives your life meaning, your relationships give you strength, Tara Schuster. You need to send away the people you don't want to be around and embrace the people who make you glow with joy, love, ease, warmth, and laughter. When looking for people to join your circle, you should consider their level of kindness. Do you feel that this person is essentially kind, or are they given to bad-mouthing, drama, and constant criticism of others? If you have a friend who is super judgmental behind people's backs, rest assured that she is going to be just as judgy about you when you're not around. Another thing you should watch out for in a friend is confidence. Good friends can support and celebrate your latest adventures and achievements because they don't have chips on their shoulders. And when you fall, good friends give you a hand up. It takes confidence to do that. While it is impractical to expect all your friends to have every good quality, they need to be well-grounded in the things you value. The importance of self-awareness in a close friend cannot be overemphasized. How aware is your friend of their behavior and how it affects others? Do they have a perspective? Are they knowledgeable enough to correct themselves or do they get defensive and shut down? Picking a self-aware friend at the onset pays off at every single turn in a friendship. You can talk through the rough patches with someone aware. Chapter 8. It is counterproductive to blame yourself for things you have no control over. Identify a relationship where you are feeling stung. Write a scene describing a time you took stuff too personally and how it felt to be hurt. What were the sensations in your body? Make a word cloud of all the words that describe how you felt. Look at each word and see if you can write out why you are not at fault. Once you have this done, you should give up on the hopes of expecting the person to act differently and move on. It is essential for you to know that even if you tell your friend that you often feel overwhelmed by her issues, she might not be able to make any changes. Remember, people are limited. What is essential is that you stand up for yourself and create a boundary that is comfortable for you. Always remember, do not blame yourself. Not everything is personal. Would you blame yourself for a fire that ravaged your house or for bad weather? Then don't blame yourself for how other people treat you because you have zero control over that. 
Instead, the thing you have control over is how you react, and you should work on a reaction that is more loving, more kind, more generous toward others. Conclusion There aren't many people in the world who live good lives. They just play roles assigned to them early in life and that's it. They never question things or put themselves first. Even when circumstances are uncomfortable, they adapt and get comfortable, but that shouldn't be. Do not be one of the people who look back with regrets on their past. Such people say things like, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Or, I wish I had let myself be happier. Instead of living a regretful life, choose something grander. Create and cultivate a life of self-awareness for yourself. Live a life you love and let yourself be loved, by you and by others. It might be fearful at first. Sometimes it seems easier to do what others want. You just want to satisfy them and get them off your back. But that is not the way. You'll only end up putting yourself in a cage, thus making yourself sad and depressed. There is no life as good and enjoyable as a life lived doing the things you want to do. And when you combine that with activities of self-care, you get to live your best life. Try this. Take a break from the outside world. Devote more time to yourself. Explore your innermost core. Learn new mantras. Write your feelings down. And you will discover you are steps ahead toward being that person you desire to be.